Because we know trickle-down economics doesn't work. Well, it doesn't work, and yet over and over again, we do it. I mean, because the people who have most, most power in Washington, as you well know, because you see it every day, are the big companies on Wall Street, and they somehow, their lobbyists are first in line with their hands up every time there is anything to be handed out. And so the crumbs basically go to average working people and the poor. Uh, and maybe because of the pandemic, people can see this more visibly, more obviously than they can normally see it, hopefully. Right, right. But um, no, that, that certainly is true. I mean, yesterday was April 1st. We have people who are really struggling in trying to make their rent payment, their mortgage payment, the relief, um, and, and we have to do more. Yes, and, and here's the thing. Uh, there's almost certainly going to be another bill. Uh, and I think Democrats in the House, Nancy Pelosi and you guys, uh, you are all working on that next bill right now. And the faster you do it, and the faster that becomes the bill that is the dominant bill, and the Senate has to respond to your bill, so much the better. Uh, now, the question is what should be in that bill, and you've already said it, and I want to repeat what you said, and I agree completely. Uh, that bill has got to focus like a laser on what families, what average working people are for, what people need, rather than what corporations need. Uh, and it's got to be about two thousand dollars a week, maybe for six months. Uh, mm -hmm. I, that's what my recommendation would be uh, mm -hmm. for everybody in this country, every resident of the United States uh, under seventy-five thousand dollars a year, or whatever the uh, whatever the the cap is going to be. Yeah, that's closer to the proposal that the Canadians are making for their people. Exactly. Why can't we? You know, we we are the rich nation in the history of of the human race. Why can't we at least? honor the needs of our people. What we've been uh, talking about truly is that, that resetting of, of priorities for, for Congress. We have to make sure that we are pri prioritizing the American people. And that's not only in the forms of uh, adequate cash payments, but that's in the form of, again, right, figuring out how to freeze rent, how to freeze mortgages, how to freeze evictions, um, how to take care of people who are struggling with the student debt, uh, what do we do uh, when it comes to health care? Can we finally agree that we need universal health care and, and provide that to every single person? Um, can we make sure that we're not prioritizing things like deportation um, and providing resources and equipment to ICE uh, and the Porter um, Patrol, but to our uh, frontline um, health care workers who are really risking their lives every single day. When I hear nurses crying, talking about how they don't have adequate equipment um, and, and the government is, is not prioritizing providing that to them. And you hear about what's happening in countries like France and Ireland, where they are universalizing and nationalizing um, their healthcare systems to make sure that they have all of the resources uh, necessary, available to every single person that needs it. And then you think about, like, everybody expects America to adequately respond and utilize all of its resources, and, and we're not doing that. Um, when, when we can, uh, it's really um, disappointing and disheartening to, to watch it play out. I was just talking to um, a reporter who... who asked me, who's an international reporter, who'd asked me, you know, what, what do you think people feel when they hear the president of the United States um, ask for donations and help from the private sector um, and, and not have the resources that the government has at, it, at its disposal to help the American people when they need it. Um, and I said, that's the, the wrong kind of American exceptionalism. You know, we, we're supposed to be great. Um, we talk about how wonderful we are um, all the time and the time it counts for us to show how great we can be uh, is when we completely fail and it's quite disheartening to watch. We have to make sure that we are compensating them for the extra costs that uh, they're occurring at the moment. Yeah, as you know, um, 
Senator Sanders and I led uh, a letter to Amazon um, uh, to asking them um, to put proper procedures in place to protect their, their workers. It's quite shameful. I know I saw um, an Instagram post by you that talked about how much um, Jeff Pesos makes an hour, which was, I think, a little over a million dollars. In comparison to um, what his, his employees in these warehouses are making um, and, and the people who are dri driving the delivery trucks. It's quite shameful, really, that we have people who live uh, in, in a such a greedy way um, that they can't understand the, that, that kind of economic um, disparity and gap um, between themselves and, and the people who uh, break their backs every single day, um, putting in the work uh, uh, in helping them create that wealth, um, continue to persist and their, their unwillingness um, to, to work with us in closing that gap these workers to lessen their demand. Uh, and so I think once people recognize that you can uh, really move the mo po uh, um, pole post if you do not shift your uh, stance on the policies that you want to see enacted, um, then we get to see those policies. Once we have people who are shifty uh, on what they want to see happen, um, then you can have right the the moneyed interest manipulate people. You can have fear manipulate people, uh, and then we lose track of what we are fighting for collectively. And so it's going to be really important for the American people to recognize that it is really important for us to continue to fight for Medicare for all. It's really important for us to continue to fight to increase the minimum wage. It's really important for us to continue to fight to make sure that unemployment insurance stays as expanded um, and extended as it is right now. It's important for us to continue to fight to make sure that the resources that we have in the government, um, the resources that are created because we are paying taxes, um, the resources that are ours are used for us first uh, in creating uh, a, a dignified life. And oftentimes you get the, the, this um, really missed opportunities where there is a disconnect between what the people are calling for and what those who are in positions of power and positions of influence are pushing. And, and we see that oftentimes between what happens when you're campaigning and you're supposed to be really close to to the calls and the asks of the people that you are asking for votes in trying to make sure that my time is utilized in communicating with my constituents about who we are seeking. Well, moral clarity, and you are a model uh, of moral clarity and courage with regard to all of these issues. Uh, and my experience has been that if you talk to people who call themselves Republicans or conservatives, but you start with what really is important to them in terms of their families, their jobs, and having enough money to live on and to make sure that their children are well protected. Yeah, I, that, that, is, that is my um, hope and, and wish. Um, can we take some, some uh, quick questions? Do you mind? Oh, absolutely. Let's see. you all will see these checks uh, within within few weeks. I think it's already been a week that um, the bill has been enacted. Uh, and so for another week, maybe, um, you should be able to see uh, your, your checks in the mail. Um, my office today send, is sending a, a letter to the secretary, um, the treasury secretary, asking for some clarity on um, what what will happen with some of these relief checks, because we're learning 
that there are many people who are going to be part of um, a, a minority group that are not going to be getting um, these checks. And so we want to have uh, an understanding of, of what the impact looks like, that you all will see these checks uh, within within few weeks. I think it's already been a week that um, the bill has been enacted. Uh, and so for another week, maybe, um, you should be able to see uh, your your checks in the mail. It is about survival, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and I think that, you know, that, that is a, a, a really good um, uh, point because we, we have... Uh, the pandemic unemployment insurance, um, which uh, did not exist because it's an expansion um, of who qualifies for unemployment insurance, which is how can we have a medical equipment shortage um, when you have spent years um, not prioritizing and preparing truly for um, for a pandemic like this to take place, that maybe the, the warmer weather in April was going to um, get rid of it, uh, that we will that we didn't have to worry. It was nothing, and I think what would have happened if in that time there was um, a serious and deliberate. Um, steps that were being taken um, within a few days and the, the realization that you are no longer going to be able to um, go to work, earn your, your regular income. You, you were no longer going to have the, the resources that you needed to sustain yourself and, and your community. Um, you know, workplaces adjusting to what it meant to having um, to to let go so many staff um, and um, uh, and and hate I think for the former administration that that truly is driving this like bizarre um, activity that that makes them unable to see uh, the help that they need to provide to the American people. I just almost cannot comprehend fully what must be going through in that decision-making process to say at a time when our country is facing a public health crisis, when we have a pandemic, um, when we have so many people uninsured who desperately uh, need to, to have medical health coverage. Here's the thing. Uh, there's almost certainly going to be another bill. Uh, and I think Democrats in the House, Nancy Pelosi and you guys, uh, you are all working on that next bill right now. And the faster you do it, and the faster that becomes the bill that is the dominant bill, and the Senate has to respond to your bill, so much the better. Uh, now, the question is, what should be in that bill? And you've already said it, and I want to repeat what you said, and I agree completely. Uh, that bill has got to focus like a laser on what families, what average working people can afford, what people need rather than what corporations need. Uh, and it's got to be about $2,000 a week, maybe for six months. Uh, mm -hmm. I, that's what my recommendation would be uh, mm -hmm. for everybody in this country, every resident of the United States, uh, under $75,000 a year or whatever the, uh, whatever the, the, the cap is going to be. Yeah, that's closer to the proposal that the Canadians are making for their people.